Shorter days, longer nights. It's that time of year again, and it's a great time to have some coffee, grab a blanket, put on your favorite sweater, and start some indoor crafts. One of my favorite things to do is draw. So I wanted to take you along on how I complete a drawing from start to finish. I visualize how I want things to look in the end when I choose a project, and then I figure out the steps in between on how I will get there. Though it never really ends up looking like exactly what I had in mind, I can usually get pretty close. I like all of my drawings to have meaning behind them, and really wanted to focus on a very important subject to me and many others, which is climate change. I visualized this piece in an oval frame, so I turned to Etsy yet again, who pulled through with a beautiful vintage one, and it was delivered super fast too. So I started to take it all apart, inspect it, and clean it up. I removed the glass so I can trace the frame to know exactly where I will need to draw. When talking about art with people, one of the things that I hear the most is, I wish I could draw. And I always say, guess what? You can. One thing I always ask is define what you consider good. Everyone is going to have a different opinion and different definition of what they think is good. Your art doesn't have to be like anyone else's. Don't compare. It only has to be your own. Someone out there, most likely multiple somebodies, is going to like what you're doing. All you have to do is start. Watch tutorials, Take in all the tools that we have at our fingertips and learn and do. The paper I order for my bigger pieces comes in large rolls. They have tons of options online depending on the medium of your choice. For a long time, I struggled with deciding on my medium. I tried painting, but always had a love for pencils, though I never thought colored pencils were an option or even good enough until I came across wax colored pencils. Uh, they can be used for layering and blending, and I fell in love. I didn't know that you could have so much control over them. So the paper that I order is specifically for them. I also use a kneadable eraser because it doesn't leave any mess when you're erasing your pencil marks. Because sketching and then outlining and blending and layering with the colored pencils take such a long time, I'm going to speed up this next section of the video for you because I still want to show you everything that goes into the process. Once everything is sketched out and I am happy with my pencil lines, I use my Micron pens to outline everything. I really love these pens because there's so many options with the tip sizes. I do see that every now and then they get clogged and sometimes the tips can break rather easily, so I always have a few extra on hand. I then erase the original pencil lines with my kneadable eraser and can get to work on coloring in my piece. I always feel that from this point on, I'm coloring in a really large coloring book page. There are many ways to blend your colored pencils. My favorite is using a blending stump you can find them online or at your local craft store, but I highly recommend doing some research and see what works for you. I also try to get a good idea of what colors I would like to use in a piece. This one, I really wanted to focus on some fall colors, lots of browns, oranges, reds, and yellows. It was sometime last year where I realized that I was making art for others and for others' reactions instead of really doing art for myself. 
I wasn't creating the things that I really wanted to create and it wasn't very fulfilling to me. So I looked inwards and asked myself, what do you want, Shannon? What do you want to see? And I know that my artwork isn't for everybody, but that's not the reason why I do it. I do it because I want to share what makes me happy with you. And in turn, I hope that it makes you happy, but it doesn't have to. This piece is actually quite a sad piece. Or maybe you see it like I see it, a hopeful piece. The message that I want to bring to this video, like I said before, is about climate change. We're in a position to do something now about how we live our lives. Each one of us has this choice. Soon, if we don't do something, we'll be past the point of making a change and it will be too late. There are little things you can do each day to make changes. You don't have to change your whole life or routine to make a difference. You can learn to compost if you're into gardening. There are always ways to reuse glass bottles and to cut down on plastic waste. Since we're dealing with a pandemic, we can choose to wear reusable washable masks because the oceans are being polluted with our disposable ones. Little things can make big changes when they're done together. And we're in this together. So now that the artwork is complete, I will work on getting it into its frame. I'm not sure that I've settled on a name for this piece yet. And if you have any suggestions, I would love to hear them. Please leave them in the comments. I think one of the most important things that we can do for this world right now is start conversation. Be a voice, help make a change. One by one, we can do this. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video on my drawing process. Um, I really hope that it inspires you to draw as well. And if it does, please feel free to send me what you create. I'd love to see it. I also want to thank you so much for taking the time to listen to a subject that's so important to me, uh, my husband, so many others, and I'm sure you as well. Um, if you want to leave a comment below and let me know how you um, currently reduce your impact on climate change or plan to do so in the near future. I would love to hear it and um, thank you. I, will, I hope you have a great November and I will see you next month in December.